All right. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, I'm so excited that we have Dr. Laura joining us this morning to share with us all about sleep. Um, welcome to everyone who's joining us for this live um, uh, information session all about sleep, and I am thrilled that Dr. Laura is joining us. Um, so just to share with you guys a little bit um, about Laura, um, I how long have I known you now? A little over a year, I think. We've been working together a little over a year, and, and friends, yes. and colleagues, yep. It's and been wonderful. So Laura Ritchie is a physical therapist. She's also a doctor of physical therapy. Um, she and I'm probably going to get the title a little bit wrong, but she's um, a health nutrition coach. Yep, women's health and functional nutrition coach. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Are you seeing this in our group, Lisa? No, I'm not seeing it in the group. Uh, I'm not seeing I'm it in the group, and I was refreshing and refreshing the page. That's so weird. Okay. Well? I think, you know what, let's maybe just go with the Zoom, and we can post it to the group after. Perfect. We do that, and then people can watch the replay of the Zoom. That sounds great. All right, amazing, amazing. Okay, so... Um, if you're watching the replay, um, type replay below. And um, so, so again, Dr. Laura is um, women's health nutrition um, functional. I know it's a mouthful. I'm a, <laughs> it's a, I'm mouthful. a doctor of physical therapy. I'm a Thank women's you. health and functional nutrition coach, and I'm an essential Thank oil you. educator. With I will write, yes, I will write that down next. And most importantly, not most importantly, but very importantly, um, she is a global team leader at doTERRA, and she is my essential oils guru, and she has taught me everything I know and continue to learn about how to best use essential oils to really benefit pretty much every aspect of my life. And so I wanted to invite her on to just share with us a little bit of fabulous information about how to support and help us sleep better. And um, one really fun little tidbit is that Dr. Laura and I have been um, sleep accountability partners for the past month or so. And it's been phenomenal because it's really forced me to you know, take a hard look at, you know, my sleep habits um, and really start to um, weave in things that are helping me sleep better. So Dr. Laura, if you wouldn't mind taking it away. Oh my gosh, of course. And if you're open to sharing the Zoom link in the Facebook group, that might be nice too, because they'll pop on and, and join yes. us. All right. I've got slides because I'm a little nerdy. So I'm going to share my <laughs> slides and you guys let me know if you can see them. Okay. And hopefully that's coming up. Okay. There. And this is going to be, you know, it's a hot topic talking about sleep. Sleep is something that a lot of people struggle with. And what's interesting is it affects so many different aspects of our health from our hormones to even our blood sugar. One night of poor sleep can make you more insulin resistant the following day. So this is something that can really move the mile marker in our health. A lot of people are feeling tired. They're feeling exhausted. Maybe they need a little bit of adrenal support. And this all comes back down to sleep. So this is something that I'm really passionate about that I love to share. And I always start with this little medical disclaimer that the information presented here, it's not intended to replace a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your qualified healthcare professional. This isn't medical advice. This is really just to share information and knowledge from my own personal research and experience and education. I really encourage you to have that partnership with your doctor. And Lisa, if you don't mind, it looks like somebody in the Zoom chat has a question for some reason when I screen share, I can't see it. But um, if there's something urgent, let me know. And, um, and we can always answer questions at the end too. We'll hold space for that. Okay. It looks like she's saying she can, she can see and hear us well. Wonderful. Yay. Okay. Thank you for telling us that. So the first tip, we want to start to establish a bedtime routine with all of this. So ideally you want to stop eating within three hours of bedtime because when we're working on digesting food, the body has a little bit harder time to relax and go to sleep. You want to start this bedtime routine about one hour before bed. So you want to dim the lights. You want to create this natural environment. This is going to help stimulate melatonin, which lets the body know it's time to go to sleep, turning off those electronics like TV, Ideally, in uh, one to two hours before bedtime, you know, the phone, looking at all of those screens that we're looking at and seeing where we can turn those down, maybe even really reading a relaxing book or journaling. And I like the old school books <laughs> or I have, remember the old school Kindle 
that has the ink, it's not backlit. Those are gonna be great. We wanna try to avoid the screens and things that are popping up. And ideally no intense mental activity within two hours of bedtime. This is not a good time to do your taxes. You know, this is not a good time to have a stressful conversation with somebody. Ideally, we wanna be thinking zen and calm and starting to support us in those areas as much as possible. And my mentor, Dr. Jessica Drummond, has something called a laptop curfew, where you shut down electronics, including laptops, tablets, smartphones, e-readers, all of those things by 8 p.m. each night. Interestingly enough, the research that she had stumbled across found that this actually helps to prevent or decrease your risk of breast cancer just by shutting down your electronics and tablets early. So it's amazing how much this all affects our hormones and our body and different systems there. Another great tip would be to start doing some type of meditation practice or visualization or gratitude practice, whatever that looks like for you. My mentor, Dr. Rita Marie Lascauzo calls them mini vacations. But this is a really great thing to do before bed. It's going to help to turn down the cortisol, that stress hormone, and help us to get into that more rest and digest part. And so this can be something as simple as putting your hand over your heart and taking a few deep breaths in and out and just visualizing something that you're grateful for or a time in your life where you had a lot of joy or fun, maybe it was vacation, maybe it was holding your newborn baby in your arms for the first time, just going back to that place and doing that quick little mini vacation, or maybe, maybe you're a mountain person, or maybe you're a beach person, just visualizing that you're there in as much detail as possible. These are all great ways to help the body to be calm and a great thing to do before bedtime. And these are a couple of my favorite apps that you can look into. A lot of these are free. There's Insight Timer, Calm, Call Me. I really love Oprah and Deepak Chopra's 21 Day Meditation Experience. I believe they have another one, a free one coming up in November. So if you Google Oprah and Deepak 21 Day Meditation Experience, it should come up for you and you can register for free. But Dr. Sarah Ballantyne, she has a beautiful, beautiful book called Go to Bed. It's an ebook, and I would highly recommend everybody Google that and find it and get it because it's fabulous. But she talks about how meditation can help you be more resilient to stressors and improve sleep quality. And that studies show benefits even with only 10 minutes. So I think we, a lot of us have this all or none mentality of, oh, if we're not sitting on a pillow doing it perfectly for an hour, then it's not serving us. But we just need a little bit. A little goes a long ways with this, whether that's you put your hand over your heart and you just take a few seconds to show some gratitude and appreciation and go back to a really wonderful time where you felt that in your life, or you do an insight timer, little guided meditation for 10 minutes, whatever works for you and feels good for you. It's all going to help. So tip number three is gentle exercise. We don't want to do a lot of really intense exercise really close to bedtime because that can fire us up and get us going and, <laughs> and we want to be calming ourselves down, but you can, it is important to commit to 30 minutes of activity and exercise every day. And so the movement, just moving your body for 30 minutes every day is going to help you to sleep better, but maybe don't do super intense exercise. Maybe don't go on a really hard run right before bed or a really intense cross training activity before bed, but things like gentle stretching or foam rolling, or maybe even some gentle yoga, something like that can be really nice before bed to help your body start to relax and simmer down a little bit. So just be cautious of real intense exercise that can keep us up. Here are a couple more tips for you because there are things that we can do during the day that are going to help to set us up for a better nighttime and a better sleep. So getting some type of blue light exposure, ideally from the sunlight, or especially now that we're transitioning into fall and winter time and it's going to get darker, and maybe you live in a really cold area and you can't go outside as much as you normally would, this is going to be a great thing to do. You could use a light therapy box 
and have that on hand to do that. This is also really good if you're one of those people that the winter really affects your mood and you start to feel more low and down, a light therapy box would be great. But ideally, if you can, if you're in an area where it's not too crazy cold and you can get outside in the morning, just 15 minutes of early morning sunlight can make a huge difference, ideally within about 15 minutes of waking up. So if this works for your schedule, you could go outside, you're going to look in the direction of the sun, not directly at the sun, but just in that direction. And it's a really great way for the body to say, oh, okay, it's morning time. We're going to stop producing melatonin. We're going to, we know that it's time to wake up. We want to start producing cortisol for our day. So it helps to reset those circadian rhythms, which is really important. And it's simple and you can go outside and do that. Bonus points if you combine it with a morning walk because you're getting your movement and the natural sunlight, which is great. But again, if you are in a really cold area, use your light box. Maybe you put your light box out and you do some yoga or you, you do your exercise inside, whatever you need to do with that. But this is great when you can add it to other activities like going for a walk or playing with your kids or playing with your pets outside. Ideally, we want to avoid added sugar after 3 p.m. because that can be a stimulant that can keep us up and can affect our sleep and not consuming caffeine after noon is another one. Sometimes it's, it's interesting, there are genetic SNPs based off of this, of how quickly you metabolize caffeine. And most people will know if you're one of those people that you just have a little bit of coffee and you get really kind of jittery and wired up and you're probably a slow metabolizer and that's going to stay in your system. So just kind of honor your body with that. I love for people to listen to their body and I believe in bioindividuality and how that best works. And avoiding alcohol I know that's a buzzkill, <laughs> but alcohol can actually keep you up at night and it can inhibit your sleep a little bit with that. And I always want people to kind of tune in and notice if they're self-medicating. Are you having to have that cup of coffee in the morning? Is it more than just a, rich, a ritual of drinking something warm, but is it actually, I need this cup of coffee to function? If that's the place where we're coming from, the adrenals, maybe a little bit tired. We may be having a little bit of an adrenal insufficiency issue and looking at helping to help support your body and your hormones and things. But a lot of people are self-medicating. They're, they're drinking coffee in the morning to get going and then they're drinking alcohol at night to go to bed. And so we want to start to look at lifestyle changes and we'll talk about some supplements and some other natural remedies to help you with that too. And also getting enough omega-3 fatty acids secrete less cortisol in response to stress when we have enough omega-3s. And they're really important for brain health, for joint health, lots of different things in the body. So taking a really great omega-3 fatty acid supplement, if you're not on that already, or eating foods that are high in omega-3s, fish, wild-caught fish, walnuts, things like that can be really helpful. And you may find that eating healthy carbs at dinner time can help especially if you're on more of a low carb diet, something like maybe you have more, especially I love to eat seasonally. So maybe you do like a spaghetti squash or an acorn squash or butternut squash or some sweet potatoes, like some type of healthy carbohydrate. Ideally, I love vegetables and adding those in. And we're now in that season of pumpkins and squash and all of those wonderful things, but adding that in at night, and you may find if you have a little bit more healthy carbs at night, you're going to sleep better with that. You can kind of play with that. But these are just things that you could do throughout the day. And I don't want this to be overwhelming. Really, honestly, I want you to pick one thing from this class that resonates with you and go from there with that, right? It starts with one thing and you can come back to this and watch it again. And when you're ready, add in another thing. So this is also going to be another really great tip to have on hand is again, creating that space. Like we talked about having a bedtime routine. This kind of goes in with that of creating that ritual, right? The bright lights, starting to turn those down, the book, the warm bath, meditating, all of these things can be really helpful and keep things family only in the evenings. And I know this can be hard for us, right? Lisa, as entrepreneurs, <laughs> It's, it's the struggle's real, but it's kind of having work, work hours and non-work hours. And I know it's tricky for me too, but even I would recommend having setting on your phone, a do not disturb 
maybe that goes on your phone at 8 p.m. And it just kind of shuts off the notifications. And the nice thing is if there's an emergency, you can put specific people on that list that they could still get through and call you if you needed to. But for the majority, it's time to settle down. It's time for family. It's time to, to relax and kind of ease into those things as much as possible. Okay, tip number six, detox bath. This can be so, so helpful. It's a really beautiful form of self-care and you can warm, do a warm bath. You know, sometimes if it's too hot, that might be stimulating for people. So I'll just say like a warm bath, whatever is comfortable for you. And something, it can be 15 minutes, it could be an hour, but this can really help with insomnia. So just creating time and space for that. I love to do two cups of Epsom salt. You can buy the big, I think it's like 20 pounds, something like that big bag from Amazon. And you can get a cup of baking soda and maybe 10 drops of your favorite essential oil. A couple of my favorites are lavender, serenity, balance, anything that's really grounding that's going to help you relax. And then you can just rinse off afterwards. I love to also put, if you like bubbles, doTERRA has, it's a body wash and you just need a little bit. So you can do this. This is a recipe. It's not going to be bubbly, but if you want like a little bit extra without the toxins and things, you could add a little bit of that in and it's just nice. And you can maybe have some nice relaxing music going and soak for a little bit. And this is great if you have sore muscles or joints and you may find that it just really helps your body to calm, calm and, and be relaxed for sleep. So this is a great one. And let's talk about the bedroom. Let's talk about the environment because this is gonna be another tip to help you. We wanna use blackout curtains in the bedroom. You wanna think dark, cold cave when you sleep. This is really going to help to optimize that. So keeping your room cool, some of the research is showing about 65 to 67 degrees, but again, everybody's different, so see what feels good for you. Remove or cover up all lights in the bedroom. And this includes alarm clocks, LEDs, night lights, anything like that. The body's really smart. This kind of blew my mind when I read about this, but it made sense. If there's some light that's coming in, say a night light or an alarm clock or something like that, and it's being exposed to your skin, even when you're asleep, your body senses that and thinks it's daytime. So it's really important to make it dark, dark, dark as much as possible. We're cyclical beings, right? And when we think back, back in the day before we had electricity, now we can create this artificial light so it can be light all the time, but we didn't have that. And people really did have to go to bed when it got dark because, or work by candlelight, I guess. But <laughs> this is something that fascinated me. So see Go into your bedroom, turn off all the lights and see if you notice any lights or anything that you can unplug or maybe move to a different room or cover up to help you with that. Switch to a light alarm clock. There's some really nice ones that instead of it beep, beep, beeping at you, it, this light comes in, it stimulates and it represents kind of that natural light of it's going to increase, it's going to get brighter and it gently wakes you up more naturally. So that could be something that's nice. If you're somebody who's a really light sleeper and you're sensitive to sounds, using a white noise generator or earplugs could be a great one. You can get a little white noise generator machine, something like that. And try sleeping on your back with your knees, with pillows under your knees, your neck supported with pillows. We want to feather your nest. We want this to be very, very comfortable. So sometimes putting some pillows under your knees can take that pressure off of the low back and be supported. If you're a side sleeper, you can do that. Maybe get a body pillow. So that way we want to think alignment with things. That's the physical therapist in me that's kind of coming out here where we don't want to be like crossing. We want to just keep things in alignment as far as the back and the sacrum with the legs and everything. So try that too. Ideally avoid sleeping on your stomach. That's really hard on your neck, your cervical spine and twisting it in different positions. And we want to think, okay, what's the best way to kind of support ourselves with that? And ideally go to bed at a time that's going to allow you to get eight to 10 hours of sleep. Most people are going to need eight to 10 hours. If you're in an adrenal insufficiency situation, you may need actually 12 hours of sleep. You may need even more. Everybody's different. So start to listen to your body and you'll know because you'll wake up, you won't feel groggy, 
you'll feel rested, you'll feel ready to take on your day with that. And don't sleep with your phone in your room or near your head. Ah, it creeps me out when people sleep with their phone under their pillow. I'm like, please don't do that. So I keep my phone in another room, completely out of the bedroom. One, we've got Wi-Fi issues and some people are sensitive to that, right? Like EMFs and it, it can just really inhibit your sleep. Plus if you're getting dings and lights and all of the stuff happening, that cannot be super helpful for us from time to time. So do this instead, just put your phone in the other room. It's going to be fine. I promise you're going to sleep better. And ideally, if you can, maybe set your Wi-Fi up on a timer that you plug into the wall that it goes off at a certain time, you know, whenever you go to bed. So maybe you have it set that, you know, if you go to bed at 1030, that that Wi-Fi turns off at 1030 and then it'll turn back on in the morning. So that way you're not having Wi-Fi going on in your home when you're sleeping. Some people are really sensitive to that, the EMF. So just look into that too. All right, tip number eight. I love the do 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 do. Like I wear my sunglasses at night. I always think of that song when I see this. But wearing your ever glasses, right? Any but any other '80s fans here? Hopefully, it's not just me. But um, <laughs> this is a great thing to do. So we talked about getting outside in the morning to get your sunlight, right? That morning sunlight in. We want to schedule a three-day sleep vacation. I'm going to explain to you what this is. This is something that I learned from my mentor, Dr. Rita Marie Lascalzo. And if you are super tired and you're just feeling burned out, take three days and you are going to go to bed early. You're going to stay in bed for 12 hours, whether you're sleeping or you could be reading a book or meditating or praying or journaling, whatever you want, but you're going to stay in bed for 12 hours. And during the day, you're going to do relaxing, calming things. You're going to read books. You're going to watch movies. You're not going to read or watch scary movies or thrillers or anything like that. Calm things for the body. You're going to have all your meals prepared for you. So maybe you made a bunch of healing soups or you have somebody bringing you food or you're ordering food in, whatever that looks like. But you do that for three days. Stay in bed for 12 hours, have a very calming, relaxing day. For some mamas, that may mean actually leaving home and checking into a hotel and, and doing this. And people will tell me, I don't know if I can do this, but I'm like, this is, this is your health. So if you are struggling, if you are burned out, and you probably know what I'm talking about if you're in that situation and you're just completely exhausted all the time, you're tired but wired at night, you can't sleep, this is a really great way to kind of give your body a little bit of a reset. And it's helpful to see if there's an adrenal insufficiency issue going on. Because most people, if they'll take the time and space to do this, will feel a whole lot better. And we're coming up into holiday season, and so maybe this is something that you could kind of schedule that out or work around or create the time and space for this. But scheduling a three-day sleep vacation can change your life. It can be a really, really huge, huge thing for your health. And then if you aren't this is, this is the life hack, and I, and I share this cautiously, the amber glasses. You can wear them if you're still going to be on your electronics or your phones. Or honestly, I just think it's a good idea to get in the habit of doing that whenever the sun goes down. When the sun goes down, get your glasses out. Put those on, wear them at night, and it's going to help to block out that blue light. You know, Keep them on until you go to bed. There are also some devices like Flux, F period L-U-X. You can get that on your on your computer or your laptop that'll start to kind of turn it this orange tent to block out the blue light. And there are some settings on iPhones, on smartphones that you can also do for night shift work or different things too. Oh yeah, Lisa's showing hers. Oh, those are cute glasses. So these look like heavy machinery glasses. There's much cuter ones. <laughs> I'll put them on. I love it. See, Lisa's prepared. She's got all the things. And it, it, it works so great. So invest in those. Think about scheduling a three-day sleep vacation. This always makes people uncomfortable when we talk about this, but it's really important. All right, let's talk about essential oils for sleep. This, is, this can be a game changer. This is something that is natural, that is safe. I would say just make sure that your essential oil is a pure therapeutic grade essential oil. A lot of the stuff out there on the market that you buy at the health food store, they're actually not. It's a synthetic fragrance. 
And we know that synthetic fragrances are the new secondhand smoke. And we're not, you know, a lot of those are extracted um, via chemicals or they're adulterated or different things. So I always like to say, if it's something like lavender or something that you would recognize as food, if you look on that bottle and you don't see a supplement fact or that it's safe to take internally, like put it down and run the other way. Cause that's, that's just not, um, so diffusing oils in your bedroom at night, that gets the aromatherapy that really helps with mood support, with respiratory support, with calming everything down. We do have a blend called breathe. So you can actually diffuse lavender and breathe together. If you've got a noisy sleeper, maybe a snorer, <laughs> cause if they're snoring, you're not going to sleep either. So we have options for you and things to help. You can apply essential oils to the bottoms of your feet before bed. This is a great place to apply your essential oils, specifically the big toe. That's a meridian point for the brain. And you can also add magnesium spray or gel to that. You can put a magnesium spray or gel on topically. And maybe say you have sore muscles, you could put the magnesium spray or gel on the sore muscles. You can even put lavender on the sore muscles or some of the essential oils and bottoms of the feet is a great place. Breathe on the big toe for snoring will change your life. It's really, really good. And then you can also take a drop of lavender internally with a cup of chamomile tea before bed. So doTERRA is the oils that I know, love, and trust, and, and those are safe to take internally. So you could do a drop under the tongue. You could do a drop in chamomile tea. You can make a little veggie capsule and take it. But for me, I really struggled with sleep and I needed all three. I needed the aromatic of diffusing it in the room. I needed the topical of applying the essential oil to the bottoms of the feet. And I needed the internal. And that was a game changer for me. Here's a couple of my favorite oils to help with sleep. Lavender is kind of the go-to. It's the gateway oil and it's the all things calm, but vetiver, vetiver is a very grounding oil. It's actually almost, I kind of think of it almost as a natural tranquilizer, if you will. It just really helps to ground and calm things down. Cedarwood, very, very similar. Both of these oils, vetiver, cedarwood, we go to quite a bit to use with for sleep. Serenity oil is a blend that has a lot of grounding oils in it. So it's got lavender, but it also has cedarwood and vetiver. So usually if people don't know where to go or start, a blend is a good place to start with that. Roman chamomile, another great oil, very calming. You could take that internally. Wild orange. I know that sounds contraintuitive. It's like wild. We're trying to sleep, but this, this is actually a really great one to be calming when you pair it with something like lavender. Balance is a grounding blend. So if you have somebody that maybe they don't like the floral oils as much, balance is a great one or cedar wood, you know, more of the woodsy kind of guy oils are great and breathe for the snoring and for the respiratory support. So there's a little blend for you. That's a little diffuser blend of four drops lavender, two drops cedar wood and one drop sandalwood. Or you could even put that in a roller bottle if you wanted to, you could play with it. I will say 90% of people do really well with lavender, serenity or vetiver those are going to cover the majority of things for people. There is a small percentage and I would put myself into this category. If you're a little bit more of a highly sensitive person and you'll kind of know what I mean by that, you're the unicorn in the family, right? You might do better with a balance cedarwood and wild orange combo. It's, it's rare, but there's some people where lavender doesn't calm them. It energizes them. So then we want to switch it up. And that's why I believe in the bioindividuality there with everything. It's really helpful. Okay. This is also a really great option too for internal use with the essential oils. We have soft gels called Serenity and Copaiba and the Serenity soft gels have lavender, L-theanine, lemon balm, passion flower, and chamomile. These are perfect to take. I will say you can take one to three. For me, three was the magical combo. And I take that 30 minutes before bed. Again, we want to give ourselves that winding down bedtime routine type thing. So diffusing your oils about an, oil, an hour before bed, 30 minutes, maybe taking them internally, putting them on the bottoms of your feet. I wouldn't do it right before bed. You want to give those things time to, to transition in. You can also take one to two of the Serenity soft gels during times of increased stress. What I love about these is it helps with that healthy relaxation and sleep without feeling groggy the next morning. It's not going to knock you out like a sedative. There's a difference between having restful sleep and being sedated and the body can kind of tell. So this is really nice for stress, for calming the nerves. And I love to add this with Copaiba. We, we joke and say Copaiba is the new CBD oil, but it works on the endocannabinoid system 
and has very high concentrations of beta carophylline, the BCP, with absolutely no THC. So there's no psychotropic effects or anything with that. You don't have to worry about that on a drug test. It's from a plant. It's from the copaiba plant. It's an essential oil. But what's interesting is it works directly on the CB2 receptors with that. So when we think about endocannabinoid system, that's pretty much everything. And copaiba works really well, again, with anxious feelings, with sleep, with mood support, but also healthy inflammatory response in the body or aches or discomfort. So this is a really nice combo. Again, you can take it before bed. You could also take it during the day if you're having anxious feelings and it's not going to zonk you out. It's just going to nicely balance the body. Essential oils don't drive a, a chemical response in the body, like say a pharmaceutical. They work to bring homeostasis, to bring balance in, which is really important. And then magnesium. That's my final tip for you. Magnesium, magnesium, magnesium. It's really important. It plays this role in over 800 different enzymatic reactions in the body. Most of us are deficient. If you're nerdy like me, there's a really cool book called The Magnesium Miracle by Dr. Carolyn Dean, and she talks about magnesium and the importance of this. You can actually work up to bowel tolerance. So basically, when you get diarrhea, you just back off a little bit, and that's when you find the sweet spot of the amount that you need for you. And then I put there some recommended daily allowance of magnesium from the National Institute of Health. You can play with that. Natural Calm is a great one, and they have one specific for sleep, calmful sleep. So you can make a little magnesium drink. You know, you could add a drop of lavender to that if you wanted, but making that into your routine and maybe pick one thing. Maybe you try magnesium or you try a detox bath or you try an essential oil, whatever, whatever that looks like there, but it can really make a big difference. And these are all the symptoms of a magnesium deficiency. So there's lots on here. How many of us are stressed or have low energy or struggle with sleep or have muscle tension or spasms or just are irritable, headaches, anxiousness, nervousness, PMS, hormonal imbalances, that's a big one, weakening bones, abnormal heart rhythm, all of these things could be a sign that you're lacking in magnesium. So this could be a great mineral to add in and start to supplement with there. And then I have a free gift for you as a thank you for being here. This, this is free. There's no sign up for my email. There's no funnels. There's no craziness. <laughs> this will take you directly to a Dropbox, a Dropbox link that you can download this. And if you have any problems with it, send me an email and I'll send it to you directly. But I, I put together a bunch of really great things from doTERRA about sleep and education and also diffuser blend recipes and roller blend recipes and tips and tricks in there. So it's just all kind of there, just a little book if you want to learn more with that. So you just type in your browser bit bit.ly forward slash Dr. Laura sleep book and it will come up for you. If you have any problems, just email me. And then we have some, these are the resources. These are people that I learned a ton from. My mentor, Dr. Jessica Drummond, she's with the Integrated Women's Health Institute. Dr. Rita Marie Lascalzo, she's with the Institute of Nutritional Endocrinology. This is where I did my trainings from. And the book, Go to Bed by Dr. Sarah Ballantyne. It's really good. It's an ebook. I'd highly recommend it. I think it's like $20. It's totally worth it. It's a great, great book to check out. And then this is my contact information. If you're curious, I have a website. I do support people with essential oils, very similar to Lisa. Like Lisa is amazing. She's created this safe space for us and she does so much education on safe cosmetics, on how to put, I didn't know what primer was until I met Lisa. So let me just say, she helped me a lot <laughs> with that. And that's what I do with the essential oils. You know, it's nice to have support and education. And um, so I do sell essential oils. You can reach out to me. And when people order their oils, I set up a call with them, either video chat call or phone call and teach you exactly how to use them. And then I have a private education group that people can be plugged into to get one-on-one -on -one support and help with that because that's really important. That's my email, womenshealthcoach at gmail.com. I'm on Facebook. You can follow me there, facebook.com forward slash Dr. Laura Ritchie. I'd love it if you like the page and follow the events. I've got teach virtual classes. I love to teach them on Instagram and Pinterest. You can follow me there. Instagram's kind of my jam, I have to say, but I'm on Facebook and things too. I'm on YouTube. I've got tons of different videos, actually over 450 videos on health and wellness education. There's several videos on sleep if you want to dive deeper into this and different recipes and things. And then I teach a free monthly virtual essential oil education class on Facebook. And you can go there or it's also called Learning with Dr. Laura. 
If you type that in on Facebook, it'll come up for you and you can find me there. But if you have any questions, please reach out and let me know. doTERRA is set up like a Sam's Club. So the way that it works is it's $35 and you get access to wholesale prices. That's 25% off of retail, which is kind of nice. Or you can do a starter kit and that $35 is free. So reach out to me and we can kind of customize something specific for your health and wellness plans. If you're kind of thinking about adding in the oils, they're amazing for sleep, but also for aches or discomfort, for digestive support, respiratory support. We're going into winter time, so immune support. There's a lot of really great things, and it's my passion to, to teach and share. All of that is so helpful. Oh, thank you. Somebody said, um, Dr. Laura is amazing. If you need any of this ever help, her support is fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, Rocky. Um, so let me know if you guys have any questions. I think somebody has their hand up. Type in your questions below and let us know if I can help and serve in any way. George Miller. Yeah, it looks like George has her hand up. <laughs> He's her hand up. <laughs> but I don't see a question on the chat box. I don't see one either. Well, and that's okay. And we'll, we'll post this in the Facebook group. So you guys will have access to the replay. And, and I apologize about the technology issues. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but we, we show up and do the things and, and there'll be a replay. <laughs> yes, absolutely. The replay will be available. Um, Dr. Laura, I just want to thank you so, so much for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with us. And um, I love, thank you so much also for providing um, your top tips for sleep. That's amazing. That's gonna, that's a fabulous resource. I can't wait to personally to dive into that as well. So thank you very much. It was very generous of you. Oh gosh, it's my pleasure. It's always such a joy to have you and to, to be a guest and to be a part of this and um, to, to get to collaborate with you because what you do is amazing. And I feel like every little bit helps, right? Reducing the toxins in our makeup, reducing our toxic load at home. That's all helping with our health and wellness. And it's huge. Oh, thank you, Sherry. She said that she found the class really helpful. I'm so glad. Yes. Yeah. And if you guys I, start to do these, tag us, tag Lisa and I, we'd love to see yes. what you're doing with your sleep. Put your glasses on. <laughs> and take a selfie. Wear your sunglasses at night. Wear your glasses. <laughs> yes. I love it. Well, thank you again for having me here. It is always such a pleasure. And thank I hope everybody so can take one so thing. On. What's that? Oh, yes. Oh, I said, just take for, for people watching, just take one thing, take one little thing that you learned and start to implement that and, um, and slowly build. It doesn't have to be all or none and give yourself some time, but it's, it's going to be magical as you start. Absolutely. To I, I cannot thank you enough for joining us. And even just making a few changes has made a huge difference for me personally. So I am grateful. Thank you. Oh, thank you too. And thank you guys all for being here and watching the replay. Take care. Bye. Bye.